All right, let's get into this 1,000 mile review. So this is the 2020 Yamaha S-Max. And this thing is pretty incredible for the, you know, price point that it's out. I think out the door, I got this thing for five grand, almost flat. Um, if you turn it on here, you can look at the odometer, you can select it here and see that I have 1,171 miles on this thing and 30 miles on it currently. And the fuel is still all the way up by the top. Um, so yeah, this thing is fantastic. Uh, haven't had a problem with it yet. It works fantastic. The only changes I've made is this Givi windshield because it's a little bit taller. It protects you from the, uh, the wind. Usually it ends about right here and it just smacks you straight in the face if you're a taller rider. And yeah, no problems at all. It's a wonderful scooter. Uh, top speed, I think I got 84 miles per hour. Uh, thing on flat, maybe going downhill. But I was, you know, bouncing off the rev limiter. Tiny tires, but you don't feel potholes. Fantastic right there. The lights on this thing are fantastic. Uh, I'm going to be doing a night ride coming up where you guys will be able to see what the lights look like at the nighttime and uh, how this thing uh, rides at night and how visible you really are. So I'm going to turn it on real quick because I like doing what the uh, like motorcycle magazines do where when they're you got the bike started or whatever except I'm up on the center stand because you cannot start this thing on the side stand uh, so that's why it's on the center stand down there we're gonna do a little uh, little what does it sound like type of thing so it's not too quiet actually um, you probably can't hear it with your windows up in your car with music playing but I can hardly hear it with my helmet on uh, not playing any music, so that's not too bad. It idles pretty well. Um, yeah, tells you the time, everything like that. Um, doing oil maintenance on this thing is really easy. There's a dipstick there. There's two different, there's a transmission and then there's the CVT oil, which you change um, back here somewhere, right under there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but here's the air box, so. I don't know, it's, it's, it's really all very simple. There's no chain, it's belt driven. So you really get, you know, you're bang for your buck. You don't have to worry about tightening your chain, just replacing the belt when it starts to wear out. But this thing doesn't go too fast or spool too hard, so it's not that big of a problem. Your battery is back here underneath here. You can just open up this case to get to it. I have a trickle charger attached and a trickle charger attachment so that I can actually charge my phone through my scooter. Now the fantastic part about this thing is there's a rubber o-ring right here um, that you can you can take this and stick it out the front where this plastic isn't and close it and it doesn't pull on this at all. I, I can pull this more if I want to and it's not you know collapsing it and then I can you know if that's plugged in I can plug it into my phone like that and it's fine. That's one of the things I really like about this scooter. It's very it's very user friendly and it helps you get wherever you want. Also, another thing is there's a fantastic pocket right here. Uh, I have a, a brake lock in here, a pen. You can keep your wallet, um, a mask or something in there. Also, a full 32 ounce Nalgene right here. Fits in there real nicely. It, it fits perfectly and you still have room on the other side for, for more stuff, as well as you have a, a little hook there for a backpack. You can fit some backpacks in here. Also, you can wear it because your backpack will sit on here instead of pulling on your shoulders because your butt is down here so it'll rest up here if you have it low enough so it's not really any strain on your back there is room for a pillion there's hand grips back here you could also attach like a bag something you could attach it to these as well as there's aluminum foot pegs fantastic um uh, keep going too far a little radiator down there next to the exhaust so yeah this is my 2020 Yamaha S Max 155 and it is my favorite thing that I've ever ridden just because of its maneuverability how cheap it was for everything 
Um, speaking of cheap, full tank of gas is about $8 here in Southern California. And insurance with Geico for like the bare minimum, which is all you need for a bare minimum scooter like this, is about $89 to $92 for an entire year of coverage. So that's super helpful. Anyways, I'm gonna ride home now. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video where I take this through the city and I show you what it's like to ride this thing through the city, you know, lane splitting, how easy that is, um, how high up you are, how you can see over cars and whatnot. So yeah, enjoy the rest of the video. I'll see you next time. Some city work. One of the greatest things about this bike is it is very lane splittable. Um, not too crazy when it comes to uh, the width of this thing. Uh, I think my elbows stick out farther than the sides. Not much farther than the handlebars, but definitely further than uh, than the sides, like the fairings and whatnot of the bike. They're super fast cars and driving like idiots. So I think it's a great place to start. <laughs> um, there's like two lates I can lane split if I want to get used to that again. I haven't ridden in a good week or two, um, so it feels good to get back out here and do this. Um, we're going to be riding through Woodland Hills today a little bit. Um, I'm going to show you some of the benefits of having a motorcycle slash scooter when you're in the city. Uh, one of them is definitely fuel economy. Uh, fuel economy is fantastic on these things, um, especially when you want to be riding in the city, because you're not going to be going full throttle. You'll be doing, you know, 35, 45 miles per hour maximum. You'll be stopping at lights and everything. And the great thing about the scooter is that you don't have to be shifting gears. Um, now, could I split this? Could I go to the front here? Yeah, but everyone's taking a right turn, and I just don't want to risk that. If it's a double right or something, I'd go in between, or a double left, I'd go in between, but it's not. So... I will not be doing that this time. Through Old Town Calabasas right now, um, there's a, what's it called? The market or whatever going on. Lots of people here. Just gonna go right around everybody here. I know it's technically one lane, but if I fit, I sit anywhere in the country for a low flat rate. Plus there's another lane right here, so we're just gonna scoot on by. Benefits of having a scooter. Here we go, back to the front. Didn't have to wait through all of that, which everyone else would have. Could I go on the freeway with this thing? Absolutely, you've seen me do it before in some of my other videos. But, uh, I'm not going to this time. Because I want to show you city riding. That's the whole point of this thing. How well does this thing do in a fairly busy city? It's like riding a bicycle without pedaling, basically. And so there is a double left here, and I will be taking the double left. And I will be splitting to the front of it with the best of my abilities. And now we're at the front. No traffic for me. Traffic? What's that? Still a little bit of side street here, but we're about to get into the hustle and bustle of things very quickly. There's absolutely no suspension on this thing. So you pretty much feel all of that going through your arms, your back, all of it. So whenever I go over like big bumps or anything, I'll stand up. Um, but you know, all, all of what I just went over was, you know, little tiny bumps and stuff. So not really that big of a deal. But going through like neighborhoods and everything with the, 
with like bigger humps and whatnot, I, I definitely try my best to to stand up when um, when I'm, when I have the ability to do it. But these I can I can pretty much take for the most part. Pass real easily. Um, the get up and go, you know, it feels real quick and nice. It's not enough to throw you off the seat. Plus, the back of the seat kind of has this hump, so it won't pull you back anyways. Um, you'll you always have something stopping you. Um, yeah, it's a great commuter bike. If you want to do like oh, uh, long travel, uh, like cross country stuff, definitely recommend a bigger scooter or. Um, an actual motorcycle or something with a D DCT if you don't want to be grabbing for that clutch lever every two minutes. Um, Honda makes the Goldwing. They make a DCT version of that with like cruise control and whatnot so you don't even have to be on the throttle. You just have to keep the bike upright and it'll pretty much do everything for you. So that's pretty nice. Um, I'm gonna split this right lane here just because that truck looks a little wide and I can just do this nice to the front of the line people take that for granted they're like ah, oh, yeah I won't really care about lane splitting I've been driving cars my entire life I'm used to sitting in the lane you know it's it's not really that bad but then they do it for the first time and they're like oh well actually that was kind of nice there's like 40 cars back there on rush hour in the city and now I'm in front of them all and I'm gonna save like 10 Five ten minutes on my on my trip, I can get places faster. Save gas, not sitting in this group of cars there. You see. When I'm gone. You could see the closest car to me there, and I di I didn't even go full throttle. I just kind of you know held down to make sure I was going. Here's some more biker bros. What I like to call actual motorcycles. Um, do I consider myself a motorcycle rider? 100%. I learned how to ride on motorcycles. Am I on one right now? Not really. I'm more of on a scooter. 100% I'd go with that one. Harley boys. gonna go in that right lane that turning lane oh never mind they're not splitting at all 100% thought they would have but it doesn't look like they will to do here when I come up to a red light as I like to slow down let cars get situated and stopped I don't like to split and then sit wait for cars to come up around me so I'll wait till these guys get settled then I'll go actually you know what I'm not even gonna split I'll just go in this lane right here and the great thing is this is an actual lane I can stay here all I want there's a motorcycle there and a police officer there and I am completely in a legal lane I don't have to make a right turn here this is a straightforward lane and uh, yeah, I have enough room to get between that Mini Cooper and the edge of the lane there. So this is still a lane for me and it's gonna be a great one. There's no one else is gonna be here. And this is the greatest part. That person wanted to push me out so I wouldn't get over. Watch this. One, I pass them and two, I'm staying in this lane if I want to. I have no problem with that. Now the only problem is cars pulling out won't see me as well. So getting over is definitely the wiser idea. And that is what I will be doing today. I'll stop here, I guess. We can talk for a minute. Um, yeah. Fuel mileage on this thing, I think I get about a full tank of gas. Uh, and I think I can go about 90 miles, 95 miles before it's, you know, bouncing off the red uh, on the empty tank symbol. Um, so it's really not not too bad 90 miles on this thing I think it's got a two or three gallon gas tank um, it cost me five eight dollars and I'm here in Southern California so our gas isn't cheap 
but it only cost me like eight dollars to fill this thing all the way up and if i'm not you know flooring it on the highway doing 65 70 then uh this thing's really not all too shabby um the fastest i've gone on this thing was 84 miles per hour so i'm pretty sure that would drop the you know miles per gallon pretty heavily but if you're just doing 25 35 miles per hour on side streets you know going from light to light you're gonna get pretty good gas mileage um, plus there's a ton of under seat storage so you know you can bring you know your your textbooks with you computer laptop if you're in school and whatnot you bring like a handbag if you're going out somewhere you can bring a briefcase maybe not a big briefcase but you know just a small you know handbag or something like that plus you got a pretty good get up and go and you're leaning too there's no pegs that you have to scrape the plastics are pretty far up so it's not really that big of a deal um when it comes to like being afraid of scraping the ground at all because i unless you're if you scrape the ground on this thing you're falling over that's how that's how high up the plastics are for this thing here so i'm gonna wait do what i usually do wait for the cars to settle like they're stopped and then split get in front of this mercedes here And boom, if they try to take off right now, they're going to hit me. Or they're going to go into the other lane to have to go around me. But what I'm doing is fairly legal. I don't know about sitting in the crosswalk. I don't know about that part. But um, this person's pretty far up, and I didn't want them to, like, do something stupid. So I went up to. See here, there's a left turn, and I'm going to take it. But here's the catch. I'm not going to split it. Why? Because the lane on the right is a um is a you know straightforward lane you, they're going straight so if i'm stuck here and they're going whizzing by me and i'm in between these cars i don't have much room to go now if there's two left turn lanes then we both be going together and i could go then but do doing this kind of split is kind of dangerous unless this happens where you get both at the same time but you don't always um so i like to take my life into my own hands and say hey i'm not gonna do that to myself Now this is gonna turn red and we're gonna sit again. Won't be too bad though. If I really wanted to, I could even get off the scooter. That's one of the crazy things you could do about like motorcycles and scooters. I could throw down my kickstand, it'll turn the bike off because that's just what it does. But I, I can stand up and I could, you know, do whatever. And if, if worse comes to worse, I can like, you know, turn the bike off and open the underseat carriage and get something out if I need it. But nine times out of 10, I don't need to do that. And I don't have to keep worry about the clutch or anything. And the turn signal stays on. The bike is the bike is on right now. Um, so that helps and boom, we're back. So yeah, you can kind of just, you know, stretch if you have to. <laughs> I don't recommend it because you're kind of just sitting in traffic and if someone comes along and you're not on your vehicle, you can't really get out of the way as well. Um, but I don't know, it's one of those fun things you can do if you're, yeah, this thing idles really well, never stalls out. This thing doesn't draw any power from the battery, so you never have to worry about your battery dying, unless of course it gets old or you drop the bike and it breaks or something. But this all, all together, this thing is incredibly cheap. Bolts and stuff, you know, you can buy them straight off Yamaha's website for fairly cheap. The plastics aren't too expensive. Um, not a lot of aftermarket ability because it's a scooter, but um, you know, obviously it has a windscreen. You can get different mirrors. Um, you could probably find an exhaust that'll fit. Um, the exhaust doesn't have to be too crazy. Plus, this thing is pretty bright red, so when the sun hits it, you can definitely see me. I'm very visible. Um, that's one of the things I like. The, the lights on this thing aren't the brightest thing. The front lights are. The headlights, those are really great at night. Um, but your brake lights with the red scooter, it's a little harder to see. So you just got to be careful about, you know, your distance between people and where people are uh, compared to you. So now you can kind of check out the lights on this car. Those are the brights. Those are the running lights. Let's see if we can keep up with a, an actual car.
guess we're getting a little bit of a freeway ride. You might not hear me talk at all because the wind's going to be kind of crazy, but we'll see how this goes. down into it. And now we're back on the street we were on before. All right, so the next thing I wanna show you here is why it's nice having a motorcycle slash scooter. Now I'm gonna wait till these cars go by so I can talk a little bit. Um, one of the greatest things is there's a, let's say this office building right here. Let's say I'm coming to get my, I don't know, taxes done or something. This is my, my certified public accountant is visitor parking. Now you can see there's parking rates on that sign. It says parking rates $1 for 30 minutes and $8 maximum. I don't have to pay any of that money because, well, I can fit right around it. And they don't check the tickets on the cars because there is none for the cars. What there is, is this little slip um, that you give a person on the way out. Now, oh, um, one of the greatest things about that is I don't have a slip. So I can actually go out the same way that the people who actually work here go out. That way, I don't have to pay any money at all. All right, so I just walked down the street to get some food. There's the scooter. I'm coming back to it now. And I've taken off my sweatshirt here. Uh, it was underneath my jacket because it got a little warm out. And one of the greatest things about having this damn scooter is uh, I don't got to worry about uh, not having room for it. Now, of course, I could just wear it. And I'm sure that wouldn't be too stressful. But I can also just pop the trunk. I've got a beanie, a hat, and my Nalgene in here. My jacket's going to fit right in. I can even squish it, fit like two other jackets in there. Um, but obviously I don't need to do that. So we're not going to. <clears throat> and I'm still in that same parking lot. Just about to leave. And I'm going to show you what that's like. So as you saw, I came in that gate over there. Didn't pay a dime. Didn't have to pay the $8 maximum for the time I was here, which was about an hour. Um, what I do get to do is either I can go back out the inway or I can do the right thing and go out and outway. So we will be going out the outway. All right, let's go around the corner here. Could go over the bump or I could just skip right through it. 
or I can just skip right around it. Whichever one I feel like doing today. Now here's, see, there's the, um, the monthly exit only for um, people who actually pay to be here. But I don't pay to be here, otherwise I have to go out that way and pay some money. But I'm not paying any money, because I don't want to. And we're off. Oh, I got hit by a bug. Holy shit, that was straight in my throat. So yeah, I'd have to go to that booth and pay money. Um, luckily on the weekend it's open, apparently. So I wouldn't have to pay anything, but weekdays I would have. So either way, I lucked out. And off we go. Back out the way we came. So yeah, one of the things I was mentioning before I got off, look, I'm about the same height as the SUVs and I'm also taller than sedans and hopefully I can get into a lane splitting situation where I can show this a little bit better like you just see right here like I, I, I'm looking down at this guy and the SUV behind me I'm you know at about the same head length or a little bit taller maybe not the taller ones like the the Forerunner or any of those Range Rovers but like a Mazda or a any of the smaller SUVs. I'm about taller than. So, we'll just chill here. Actually, I'm gonna pull up a little bit so you can see here. This is like the top of my shield and I'm, I'm taller than this vehicle. I'm only five foot 10 and I'm taller than it sitting on this seat here. Um, and I'm definitely taller than uh, the Nissan in front of us. So I can see over perfectly. Uh, I can see all the cars on the other side there. I can see the road. Obviously, I'm a little bit to the side here, but if I was, you know, more over to the left, I could still see over everyone. So I can see the brake lights of the car in front of me, the car in front of them, and know if there's something going on that I need to stop for. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna absolute full throttle off this thing here. Let's, uh, let's see how fast this thing can get up to and how fast it can do it. I guess the word I could have just used is, let's see how quick this is. All right, that's 20, that's 30, that's 40, that's a truck. Woo! Maneuverability, baby. And that's 60 right there, full throttle. Yep, see that pothole right there, went right over it. That one too, didn't even feel it. I'm feeling the bumps in the road, but I didn't feel the potholes. These tires might be small, but you hardly feel the potholes, how light this thing is. Hey, you got a head nod. That's more than I usually get. That's another thing on scooters, when you do the little like motorcycle two-wheel wave with the like peace sign downwards, um, don't expect too many back. The other day I went for a canyon ride on a Saturday. And I think I saw a good like 50 something riders here in Southern California. And I think I maybe got like 10 waves. So that's a, a pretty low percentage of people who actually recognize scooters as motorcycles. Now granted half of those people are Harley Davidson riders so they hardly wave at all. Um, that's nothing against Harley riders. They just don't like waving. They got more important things to do, like lose their hearing to their exhausts, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's a it's a personal choice. If that's something you like, then that's something you gotta do. Me on this scooter, I can't even hear this thing. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but probably not. I was revving it a little bit. Maybe when I get on it, you'll be able to hear it here. But, uh, it's not promised. That light is out. <laughs> it screwed me up a little bit. I didn't know if I was actually able to go there or not. I wonder if I'll make this. Okay, almost not. Well, it's a good thing I made that light. That would have been real bad if I ran a red. Because that is illegal. 
Don't run red lights. Welcome back to the city of Calabasas.